Most of us are taught not to worry about money because money is the root of all evil. It's bad. It's taboo. But at the same time, most people hate their jobs. And at the same time, most people hate how much money they make. And now when I say most people, I don't say this to be general. I'm saying most people as in the majority of Americans, more than 50% of Americans hate the job that they're going to and they hate how much money they're making. In fact, in 2022, a study came out which said that job unhappiness was reported to be at an all-time high. Now, by the end of this video, not only are you going to understand why this is the case, but you're also going to understand how you can break out of the system because the reality is our economic system that we are in right now, it breeds people to be employees and it breeds people to be broke. But it starts with the way that our economic system is designed because our economic system is designed to breed employees who stay broke. By default, if you do what everybody else does, if you blindly follow the system, you will get a job and you will statistically more likely than not be broke. But why is that the case? Well, if we start by looking at the employee side, our educational system and our whole financial system is designed to breed employees. Now, this doesn't mean that it's necessarily a bad thing to be an employee. In fact, not everybody should be an entrepreneur, but you have to understand the way that our educational system is designed. That way we could get into the deeper stuff. We all go to school to get a degree so we can do what? Not start a business, not invest, not build real financial freedom. It's so we can get a job. Now, you might be thinking, but just breathe. The goal of getting a good job is so we can be financially free. Sure, but there's a degree of separation there because there's a difference between getting a job and becoming financially free. In fact, that's why some of the most wealthiest people, the most financially free people in our economic system today are not people who have jobs. It's people who do something completely different. So our educational system is designed to breed employees. And in this economic system that we're in right now, which is called a capitalist system, there are two ways that you can get paid. You can get paid from your labor, which is the work that you do, or you can get paid from your capital, which is from your money. Now, when you get paid from your labor, this is the job that you do. You go to work to get paid. You go to McDonald's and you flip burgers and you get paid. You go to your accounting firm and you do taxes and you get paid. You go to your medical office because you're a doctor, you do a surgery and you get paid. You go to work and you do something and you get paid. This is what we are taught to do. This is what our educational system teaches. It teaches us how to get paid from our labor. Now, most of us, myself included, we're only taught that if you want to increase how much wealth you will build, you have to increase how much money you make. And there's some correlation there, but again, there's a degree of separation because what we've seen happen is just because you make more money doesn't mean you're going to be more wealthy because, well, most people make money to buy things. And sure, you can make more money, have a bigger home, have a faster car, have nicer things, but still be broke. This is where now we have to break it down and really understand the difference between financial wealth and the job that you have. Our education system breeds people to earn money from their labor. And again, in this capitalist system, there are two ways to get paid. You can get paid from your labor or you can get paid from your capital. Now, if we focus on the labor side, when you get paid from your labor, you go to work and you get paid, you have one stream of income which relies on you. This is what all of us are taught to do. The problem is, if you cannot go to work, if you break your leg and you cannot perform surgeries anymore, if you want to go on a vacation or if you have to do something and you can no longer get paid, well, that stream of income goes away. And what ends up happening for the majority of Americans is your expenses don't. Your income goes away, but you still have expenses. And this is where so many people get caught up in this, what is known as the rat race, where you're going to work to get paid just to pay your bills. You're not going to work because you love it. You're not going to work to fulfill some passion or purpose. You're going to work to pay bills, period. And this is what's normal. And to think that that's not normal is almost taboo now because what are you talking about? To go to work just for passion. How is that passion going to pay the bills? Because you're right. You have to be able to pay the bills. You have to be able to pay down your rent, pay down your mortgage, pay off your credit card, pay off the whatever else you have to pay. But this is where now understanding the system can allow you to understand how you can actually build wealth because in this capitalist system, you can also get paid from your capital. And if you look at the wealthiest people on the planet, they get paid from their capital more than they do their labor. 
Now, you don't have to be a multi-billionaire or even a multi-millionaire to take advantage of this, but you have to understand the way that this system works because the reality is you can make way more money with much less effort when you get paid from your capital. But you have to understand this first because nowhere in our education system do we learn how to get paid from our capital. I went through a lot of schooling. I didn't grow up learning about financial education. My parents are traditional Indian immigrants who told me that if I want to become successful in this country, I have to go out and become a doctor. And that is a good way to go for some people. But along the way, I started learning about money. I started learning about investing. And these were things that I had never, I had never learned about before. And it was a whole new world. And I also started learning about entrepreneurship, which was a good fit for me. Again, not for everybody, but it was a good fit for me, which is why I kind of changed my path. And I had to learn this whole new world of understanding the economic system, understanding money, understanding investing, understanding all these things that I was never exposed to before. But the reality is, if you don't learn these things, if you don't understand how a capitalist system works, you will never be able to win in the system. And I know the whole term capitalist incites a lot of emotions. It makes some people angry. It makes some people very emotional. It makes some people very happy. But at the end of the day, it's not an emotional thing. When I talk about this system, I don't talk from a political or an emotional standpoint. I speak from a very logical and practical standpoint where this is what the system is. And if you don't understand it, you will not be able to win in the system. If you understand it, you will understand how our economic system works, you will understand how money works, and then you will be able to actually capitalize on the system. Now, going back, how do you make money from your capital? Because this is what the wealthiest people do. This is where now you take some of the money that you earn, and then you go out and buy assets with them, investments. I'll talk about what these types of investments are in just a little bit, but this is what wealthy people do. And the biggest hurdle that a lot of people make mentally is, well, I don't have rich parents. I don't have millions of dollars to invest. I don't have all this money to go out and start buying these assets to become wealthy. And most people don't. Most of us are not born with parents who can give us millions of dollars to start our investing career to start buying these assets. But you don't need millions of dollars to start. You don't even need $1,000 to start. You don't even need $100 to start thanks to technology. But you have to have the right education and the discipline to get started. That way you can break out of the traditional system. Because if you can own enough assets where now you're making more money from your investments than you are your job, now you have broken out of the system and you are financially free because you don't need the income from your job to survive. And this is very possible for the average person but it's not possible unless you understand the system. And my goal is not to make friends. My goal is to talk about the system because when I first learned about this, I was so angry. I was in college. I was studying to become a doctor. I was studying to take the medical admission test, medical college admission test. And I started learning about money and investing. And that was when I made my first real dive into the investment space and started learning things and doing things. I made a lot of mistakes, lost money, made money. But that was when I started to learn that the wealthiest people in the world are not people who earn from their labor, it's people who earn from their capital. Because there's no limit to how much you can own, but there's a limit to how much you can do. See, when you're working from your labor side, there's a limit to how many hours a day you can work. There's a limit to how many burgers you can flip. There's a limit to how many surgeries you can do. There's a limit to how many hours you can put in at your job. But there's no limit to how many assets that you can own. And sure, maybe you got to start with $10 or $100 or $1,000 or $10,000 or $100,000, wherever you are today. But you can continually build that up. Because if now you can continually put some money aside, you can start building new streams of income that don't require you to go to work, that will start paying you because you own the right assets. And this is where now it starts with the education of understanding that most people, Go to work to get paid to buy things. Most people are going to work. That way they can buy a bigger home, buy a nicer car, go on fancy vacations. This is what most people, and when I say most people, I don't say this as a general term. I mean, statistically, the average person, the majority of people in America are going to work to do this. They're going to work to buy things versus the wealthy and people who aspire to become wealthy, people who think different than the majority of people, or as I like to call it, the minority-minded people, people who think differently, it has nothing to do with the way you look, it's the way you think. 
they're doing something very different. They're going to work not to buy things. They're going to work to buy assets. And that is the primary purpose of getting paid. You're working your labor, whether it's a cashier at McDonald's or a doctor at a hospital. You're going to work to get paid. That way you can buy more assets. And then at the same time, you're working to stack these assets. Your assets are working to pay you. Then if you can live off of the assets, now you're working for your purpose. You're working for your passion. You're working because you enjoy it because the income that you're getting is enough to cover your expenses. This is how wealthy people are thinking. Now, before I go into how do you invest and all the things that you need to know, I do want to let you know that we have a full ebook on how to start investing. It's completely free that you can also read that goes over how you can make your first investment, different ways that you can invest and how you can start generating cash flow from investments or what some people like to call passive income. So if you want to read this free ebook, I got the link to hike and download it for free through our Market Insiders company down in the description below. The most common places and ways that you can invest your money are number one in the stock market. This is probably the most accessible place to invest your money. Number two, into physical real estate. Number two, three into businesses and number four into your own business idea. These are your more traditional investments where you can put your money that way. Now you can grow this investment and then you can get paid. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can get paid because you can get paid from your investment value going up. Like you buy a stock for a hundred dollars and it goes up to $200 a share, or you buy a piece of real estate for a hundred thousand dollars and then it goes up to $200,000. That's appreciation. The second way that you can get paid is through cash flow. I'm a big fan of cash flow investing in the stock market. This would be like investing in a stock that is going to pay you every three months without you having to sell the stock. This is called a dividend. Then every three months, you get this cash flow check. You get this little piece of payment just for owning the investment and not doing anything else. In the real estate game, it's the same thing. You buy a property that's paying you with rental income. You use this income to pay off your expenses. And then after you pay your expenses, you put the remainder in your pocket. That's your profit each and every month. That is cash flow investing. The majority of my investments, about 75% of my total investment portfolio are cash flow producing assets because I like cash flow. Now, I can't tell you what to do, and I'm going to give you a little disclaimer right now because the reality is I cannot recommend anything for you. Investing has risks. You are never guaranteed to make money when you invest. In fact, you will probably lose money at some point, which is why you need to always do your own due diligence and never ever blindly trust a random guy on YouTube, but now understand that wealthy people build their wealth by buying assets. So now when you go to Sweet Green or when you go to Chipotle and you spend money, Chipotle or Sweet Green are making money. By the way, I went to Sweet Green for the first time a couple of weeks ago when I was in Manhattan and man, I think Chipotle, you got some competition. Anyways, when you go and you spend money at these places, you are a consumer. Every single one of us in the world are consumers. Whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you're middle class, you are a consumer because you have to buy things. You need a place to live. If you don't own your home, well, then you got to pay rent. Even if you own your home, you got to pay interest on your mortgage. Even if you own your home free and clear, well, you got to pay for your upgrades. You got to pay for your maintenance. You got to pay for the appliances. You got to pay for the furniture. When you go out and you spend money, you are a consumer. All of us know what it means to be a consumer but most of us have no idea of what it means to be an investor. And when you become an investor, now you own a piece of the economic system. Because yeah, you could go out and start the next sweet green. You can go out and try to start the next Chipotle. But if you don't have the entrepreneurial bug or the interest or the drive or the motivation, that's okay. It's not for everybody. But you can own a piece of the economic system. Now, this is where most people think, well, I have to go out and research companies. I have to go out and research financials and stocks and listen to earnings calls. And that's a lot of work. And I'm not interested in that. And what about the risk? And I don't like that. You don't have to do all that. That's not for everybody. Not everybody has to go out and invest in individual companies. Not everybody is made to go out and do this type of research. You don't have to do that. But you can still get exposure to the economy and the companies that make America, America by investing in things like index funds or ETFs, or even mutual funds. These are now baskets of stocks where instead of you going out and investing in one company, you invest in a group, a fund that gives exposure to 10, 100, 
500 or a thousand different companies. That way now you lower the risk and you can get exposure to a broad list of companies. Like there are funds out there that give you exposure to the total stock market. And again, I can't tell you what to invest in. I'm going to give these to you just for hypothetical reasons or just for examples. VTI, that ETF will give you exposure to the total stock market. SPY, that ETF will give you exposure to the biggest 500 companies in the stock market called the S&P 500. You have ETFs like QQQ, which will give you exposure to the NASDAQ. You have ETFs like DJI that will give you exposure to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. You have ETFs that will give you exposure to real estate companies. You have ETFs that will give you exposure to healthcare companies. You have ETFs that will give you exposure to international companies. You have ETFs that will give you exposure to emerging markets. There are ETFs, index funds, mutual funds for pretty much anything that you can imagine. And now, if you don't care for or don't want to or don't have the time to go out and find the perfect company to invest in, that's okay. You don't need to. But you have to get started somewhere. See, the biggest investment mistake that so many people make isn't that they invest their money into the wrong thing. They don't have the right stock or the right ETF or the right asset class. They invested in stocks instead of real estate. The biggest mistake that so many people make is that they never start investing or that they start too late. And this is where now we have to flip the script and understand wealthy people, people who become wealthy and people who aspire to become wealthy are focused on buying these assets. Everybody else who is broke, they don't have any real wealth, they are focused on buying things. So now if you want to flip the script and you want to be one of the people that can actually become wealthy and is wealthy and owns the assets and can be financially free, you need to earn more assets. How can you get more assets? You need more money going to buy these assets. How can you do that? Well, you can spend less or you can earn more. And this is where you have to find the right combination for you because most people, if you went out and asked 100 people, how do you fix your financial problems? All 100 of them are going to come back and say, I need more money. But what we've seen happen statistically is that when people make more money, they don't necessarily do any better with their money. Because when people make more money, what do they do? They spend more money because that's what we're taught. If you earn more money without any more financial education, you're going to dig yourself even deeper into a bigger financial hole. That's why the majority of people statistically who make six figures a year are also living paycheck to paycheck. They are still broke. It's not because of how much money they're earning. It's because we don't have any tools or education on what we should do with the money that we make. That's why making more money without the right financial education ends up digging most people statistically into a bigger financial hole. Now, I want you to understand this and do it a little bit differently. Yeah, obviously work to spend less money. See if there's places that you can cut back. That way you have more money right now because it's more accessible to pay down the debt and start investing the money sooner. Then as you start to do that and as you start to understand the system, the next question is how can you earn more money that way you have more money to actually put into your investments? And this is where now... A big question is, what happens if I hate my job, but I'm getting paid good? And what about this whole idea of work-life balance? How much should I be working? And let me start with the idea of work-life balance, because there's this big thought in the world that you have to live in balance. I need to have equal time with my friends I need to have equal time for my work. I need to have equal time for my wife, for my husband. I got to have equal time for my kids. And I got to have a full eight hours of sleep. And uh, I'm going to give you my opinions on this because I think that's just a bunch of crap. It doesn't work like that. You have to live imbalanced. That way you can have more balance in your life. And what is that imbalance? Well, you got to figure it out for yourself. When somebody's trying to get into shape physically, you can't say, well, how about you just take a couple cheat days a week and you take it easy? Sure, that might work if you're trying to take it easy and just achieve a little bit of success. But if you really want to look like The Rock, you want to look like John Cena, you don't do that by taking cheat days. You do that by putting your butt to work. You do that by grinding, waking up, working out, eating healthy, doing the right things, and making a drastic change in your lifestyle. That is a lifestyle change. And when you're trying to drastically change your finances, and this is where you got to understand where it is that you want to go. But if you want to be that flying in private jets, I want to own massive amounts of wealth, and I want to build something that most people only dream of, you're going to have to make more extreme sacrifices. 
if you just want to say, you know what, I just want to be financially free, then yeah, maybe you don't got to do that. But you got to understand where on the spectrum that you want to be of wealth. When I was starting off on my financial journey, my financial education journey, my whatever you want to call it, the wealth journey, there was no concept of I need time to have fun or do other things. I had a running joke with all of my friends that I don't go on a vacation unless I'm getting paid to go on vacation. I was working in the wedding industry and the event planning industry. And if a bride and groom were going to hire me to go to the destination wedding somewhere outside of where I was living, then I would go travel because I'm getting paid to go. They're paying for my expenses and they're going to put some money in my pocket to go there. But if I wasn't getting paid to go, I wasn't traveling. I also wasn't eating at restaurants. Sometimes I would go to the restaurant and drink water, but I don't want to spend any money on anything that wasn't productive or allowing me to do more of what I wanted to do. For many years, my number one goal, I was trying to make money in a lot of different places. My only goal was to buy more real estate, period. I was not spending money on my apartment. I wasn't spending money on cars. I wasn't spending money on things, even though I was making good money. I was making uh, over $100,000 a year back when I was in law school, but I spent none of it or very little of it because I wanted to put every penny possible to buy more rental properties. That was my number one goal. And so now you got to figure out where on the goal that you want to be and understand that sometimes you got to live imbalanced. That way you can have more balance in your life. And that imbalance is going to depend on where you are in your life. Do you have kids? Are you married? Are you single? How old are you? What are your financial responsibilities? Do you have financial responsibilities? If you have a lot of financial responsibilities, can you do something else that way you have more money coming in to allow you to, to have more money to invest? This is where now you got to figure out and understand that you have to live imbalanced to have more balance in your life. The next question is, well, I hate my job. I don't like what I do. I want to go follow my purpose. Sounds great in theory. And sure, it's possible. But what should you do at the moment? Well, the next question is, do you have the entrepreneurial bug? Can you do something that will allow you to earn money while doing something that you love? If no, and you have all these financial obligations, stick it out for a little while and get your finances in order. Because the big thing for me, and this, I think Robert Kiyosaki says this, don't work to earn, work to learn. And that works very well when you have the entrepreneurial bug because now you're learning to do something that way you can build something on your own. But if you do not want to go out and start something and create your own income and you want to stay long-term at a job and you're thinking about just going from a job that pays you $95,000 a year to $45,000 a year because it'll help you follow your passion and you want to build wealth and you have no idea of how you're going to retire and you have no other financial cushion, this is where right now you got to suck it up, continue going to work. That way you have more of a financial base because the reality is the money you make from your job isn't very important when you have the assets. But you also don't want to get tied up in this game where thinking, oh, just another year, just another two years, just another three years, and then you keep going down the cycle again and again and again and again and again. You really need to figure this out now financially and understand what can your finances look like? If you can downgrade your finances and live okay off of $45,000 a year and still have money to invest, fine, then go ahead and do it as long as you're happy doing what you do and you're still putting money aside to invest. But if your lifestyle does not allow for that, then you got to figure it out. If you're not willing to cut down the lifestyle, you got to continue earning the money. The last thing you want to do is cut down the income and then your lifestyle is still at $85,000 a year whether you're earning $45,000 a year, that way you dig yourself into a deeper financial hole and you're not willing to do anything different. I mean, it's a practical answer. Figure out what is important to you right now. That way you can go out and actually achieve the financial freedom that you want. But it's a lot easier to do whatever the heck you want when you have that financial freedom. And the way that you can get that financial freedom is by living below your means and investing the heck out of your money because the faster you can buy those assets, the faster those assets can pay for your lifestyle. And this is where also you want to take a look at what's happening in the economy around us right now because we're seeing a lot of shifts happen in the economy with the economy changing, with layoffs rising, and this whole great resignation thing going on. That way you can make a more informed decision. That way you don't fall into the traps and end up going to a new job where then you get laid off and now you're financially stuck because you can't get an income, but your expenses keep rising. Our job market is going through a very interesting transition right now. 
For one, we are seeing employers ask their employees or actually demand their employees to come back into the office. Second, we're seeing companies have to be more productive now, meaning they have to cut back on costs, meaning they're doing more layoffs. And third, we've seen the Federal Reserve Bank make it clear that they want to cool down the economy to bring inflation down with higher interest rates, which will result in more layoffs. And even the Federal Reserve Bank has announced that they anticipate a slower economy within the next 12 months. In fact, the Federal Reserve Bank most recently in April came out and said in the report that they're finally announcing that they believe that we will enter a recession by the end of 2023. So what does this mean now for your job if you're thinking about changing jobs and what's going on with the great resignation? Because the reality is if we just follow the Federal Reserve Bank's baseline approach where right now they expect unemployment to go up to 4.5%. This is according to the Federal Reserve Bank data. That would mean that by the end of 2023, we would see about 2 million Americans lose their job. Now, at the same time, we're seeing a lot of shifts happen just in the general, let's call it company culture, because after the pandemic hit, nobody was going into the office to work. The economy was shut down and people were scared about the whole pandemic. And so people were forced to work from home, which for some people was great. And for some companies, it was great. But for some people, it wasn't. But for the first time, we saw this ability where people could actually work from home. And everyone talked about how this was amazing and it was going to change the workforce. Now, here we are in 2023 and you're starting to see that shift where more and more employers are asking or demanding their employees to come back into the office. And I can tell you from a realtor perspective, because I'm a licensed realtor, I don't work as a licensed realtor, but I know a lot of realtors because I'm uh, pretty involved in the real estate space and I've worked in that space before. And at least here in Michigan, what we're starting to see happen is more and more employers are coming back into the offices and office vacancies here are coming down quite a bit. Now, I know in other places like Manhattan, you still have very high office vacancies. But from what I've seen, more and more employers are asking people to come back because they found it to be more productive in the office. And not to mention that when you have a city where restaurants rely on people going to work and having business meetings for lunch. And we have all those little shops that rely on people walking around after work, before work, or during lunch to survive. And many of them have been hurting. You have a lot of pressure from cities and governments telling companies to get their employees back into the office because if they come back into the office, well, that will help the restaurant business. That would help a lot of the other smaller businesses which are struggling. Not only are they struggling to get the sales in these cities because people aren't working like they were, but they're also struggling to find staff, which is a very strange thing going on right now because on one hand, we have the super low unemployment rate. On the other hand, people are not happy at their jobs. On the third hand, people feel like they're not fulfilled at their jobs. And then fourth, People feel like they're not making enough money. And this is a very strange thing that we're in right now because we still have high inflation. Interest rates are rising. And it seems like they're going to have to go higher because inflation hasn't come down fast enough or far enough for the Federal Reserve Bank to justify no more interest rate hikes. And there's going to be a cost for the higher interest rates. That cost is going to be an economic slowdown. Because the reason why the Federal Reserve Bank has to raise interest rates, and we did a number of full deep dives on the entire great resignation and interest rates and how this is all going to play out in market briefs. If you haven't joined market briefs yet, this is my free financial newsletter where every day my team is breaking down what's happening and things like inflation, the economy, the housing market, the stock market into a fun, witty, and easy to read email. You can read this email in less than five minutes every morning and it's completely free. So if you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, I'll put the link to how you can join my free newsletter down in the description below. But this is where now we have a lot of interesting things happening because inflation is already slowing down the economy. See, our economy runs on spending. The more money you spend at Chipotle, the more money Chipotle makes. The more money you spend at Sweet Greens, the more money Sweet Greens makes. The more money that Chipotle and Sweet Green makes, the more money that they have to go out and open more stores invest in better products, improve their technology, which means more employees. But because there's high inflation, naturally, some people have had to cut back on spending. We also did a poll in Market Briefs where we discussed this. And the reality is 
people have been forced to cut back because the cost of things have been rising and naturally people's wages haven't risen fast enough to keep up with inflation. Then, at the same time, the Federal Reserve Bank is raising interest rates to bring inflation down. This higher interest rates have a cost. Now, I've talked about this a lot of times here, but the higher interest rates have a cost because, well, most debt most corporate debt, most national debt is not a fixed rate debt. These are variable rates, meaning every three years, every five years, every so often, the interest rate will readjust. And there was a study that came out and said that I think it was 50% of all commercial real estate debt and corporate debt, something like that, it was around 50%, is set to readjust in the next 24 months. So we're talking about hundreds of billions, if not a trillion dollars worth of debt that is going to be readjusting with the higher interest rates, which means that these commercial landlords who own these office properties that are sitting vacant are going to get a huge wake-up call because when the interest rate readjusts, their expenses are going to skyrocket because it's not like interest rates went up slightly in the last few years. They went up very drastically in the last few years. And so when a commercial landlord goes to the bank and says, hey, my interest rate's readjusting, we need to readjust the loan, and then their payments double, they're going to need a lot more money in order to justify those payments. And if they're not occupied, they're going to have a tough time paying that, which is going to create a big shakeup in the commercial real estate market in the coming years, unless we see a big change happen, which is why you've been seeing a lot of pressure from landlords to get tenants back into the offices. And then, on the other hand, corporations have a very similar struggle because corporations have also loaded up on debt over the last few years. This debt was loaded up at a very low interest rate. And corporate debt, business debt, is not a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. It readjusts every few years. And in the next 24 months, as more and more of these billions and billions of dollars with the corporate debt readjust, you're going to see corporations see their expenses rise. And at the same time, we've been seeing the economy struggle just because of the high inflation. And so now, if you're a corporation and your expenses are rising, what do you do? Well, you're going to have to make more money to cover the higher expenses. And how do you do that? Well, you need more productivity. How do you do that? We need people to do more. How do you do that? Well, this is, again, going back to what we've been talking about, why so many corporations have been asking and demanding employees to come back into the office because it's a way to get people to brainstorm more, work better together. Now, of course, this doesn't work for everybody. Some people, there are some people out there that work better working from home because now when you're working from home, you can go to the gym in the middle of the day and you're willing to work till 10 or 11 p.m. because it provides you with more flexible schedules. You don't have to commute in the car for 40 minutes in the morning and 40 minutes in the evening. And you don't have to worry about having those, let's call them silly, conversations when you go to the bathroom with your coworkers and do all that kind of corporate politics stuff that you're not a fan of and so you have some people that are like that some people that need the office environment and then you have everybody in the middle and this is where corporations are going to be we're seeing more corporations try to figure out that happy medium or balance where it's not a fully remote lifestyle it's not a fully in the office lifestyle but somewhere in the middle and that right balance is going to change from corporation to corporation we've seen some banks say Nope, you got to come into the office every single day and be here from morning to night like it used to be. You have other companies saying, all right, well, how about we come into the office one day a week and other companies that are saying three days a week and we're going to see more and more of this progress and we're going to see a very big change in the office environment. But my whole point of saying this now is if you're thinking about changing jobs or doing something different, understand also where we are in the economy because The Great Resignation was a big thing over the last few years. Then there was this whole movement of quiet quitting. But I want you to also understand where we are in the economic cycle. Because right now, we have a lot of red flags in our economy. Even the Federal Reserve Bank now has come out publicly and said that their base case is that we are going to be in a recession within the next 12 months. That is the base case by the Federal Reserve Bank or Central Bank here in the United States. And their base case is that 2 million Americans are going to lose their jobs. Again, this is directly from the Federal Reserve Bank data. This is not me just saying theory. I'm telling you what our central bank in the United States is saying. If this is our base case, you need to understand what's going on before you 
potentially do something that you might regret. And so if you're working for a company and, and you are, let's say, at the bottom end of the performers and the company runs into financial troubles or they need to cut costs, who are they going to let go first? It's not going to be the top performers. It's going to be the people that are the bottom performers. And so this is a time for you to really just understand what's happening. That way you can make sure you take care of your financial future. And especially if you don't have the assets to take care of you. Because again, if you want to become wealthy, that wealth is not going to be built through your income, whether you're making $40,000 a year or $400,000 a year. That wealth is built through what you do with your income. Because if you're using your income to buy fast cars and nice homes, you are product rich, but not actually rich. But if you're using your income to buy assets, stocks, real estate, businesses, whatever it might be, now it's completely different. Because now, well, if you have enough assets and you lose your job and it's not going to affect you, then sure, you have a lot more freedom and flexibility to do whatever it is that you want. But if you need that income, that way you can support your family, that way you can support your own finances and whatever it is that you have to do, you have to understand what's happening in the economy before you make big decisions because the last thing you want to see happen is you change jobs from a good company to a bad company and then that company starts letting go of the recent hires because of economic struggles and then you know, you know where I'm going with this. So this is where all I'm saying is understand what's happening around you. That way you can make smarter decisions. That way you don't get screwed over by the system. Because the reality is, look, quiet quitting sounds fun. I don't want to do more than what I'm asked for. But the reality is, listen, if you want to exceed in life, you cannot have a I'm going to do a just show up attitude. The people that win are the people that have excelling mindsets. People who say, I'm going to do the best job no matter what I do. And maybe that means you got to find a different career, something that gives you more purpose, something that allows you to do something that you love, that way you can actually excel in it. But couple that with what's happening in the economy, that way you can make smarter decisions financially. But at the end of the day, you got to earn money to do one thing. You got to earn money to buy assets. And the reason why so many people feel stuck in their jobs is because they're using their money to buy liabilities. They're using their money to buy cars, vacations, nice homes, and other fancy things which rack up your bills. And then you feel stuck because you have to keep working because you got bills to pay. And you don't have money to invest because you got bills to pay. And now you get stuck into the cycle where you keep working harder because now you're thinking, man, if I just got a little bit of a raise, if I got a $10,000 raise, man, my life is going to feel so much more free. I'll be able to build up my savings. I'll be able to do the nice things. And then you finally get that raise that you've been working for. But then your car lease comes due. And then you decide to upgrade to a nicer BMW because, well, you just got a new raise. And then you say, well, it's been so long since we've been on a vacation. So then you book a trip to Cancun. And now all of a sudden your raise doesn't do anything different for your finances. So this is where, yeah, obviously understand what's happening in the markets, but also understand how to use your money. That way you can build your wealth instead of making everybody else around you rich because the more you spend, the more money somebody else makes. And your duty right now isn't to stimulate the economic system. It is to stimulate your own wealth, which means you need to be using your money to build your wealth. And once you do that, none of this other stuff matters. You're much freer and you're not subservient to a boss or anything else in the system because now you own the assets. But the only way that you can do it is if you use your income from your labor right now. You use your paycheck to buy more assets. And it's hard. It's going to take time. And it's stressful. But this is where now if you don't do that, you're going to be stuck in this system forever. But if you want to get out of the system, you have to be able to get out of it. And this is where I also want to mention a little bit of how money plays a part in your life. Because a big thing that happens here in this situation is a lot of people kind of get caught into this whole idea of, oh, money shouldn't matter. I'm not going to worry about it. And I just start stressing about money. I mean, most of us grow up being told that money is taboo. Don't talk about money because money is the root of all evil. And the reason why so many people say that is because they're insecure about their money and they have no idea of how money plays a part in their life. Now, I've created something that I call the quadrifid theory, which is where I talk about if you want to live a happy and fulfilled life, you have to be fit in these four different areas of life. And I'll show it on the screen here, which is where at the bottom, you have to be physically fit. Meaning, if you're on your deathbed, if you can't breathe, if you're unhealthy, the only thing that you want is to be healthy again. 
You know, there's a saying that a healthy person can have a thousand wishes, but an unhealthy person only wants one wish, which is to be happy and healthy again. The second thing is you have to be mentally fit. And we're in a time where people are finally starting to learn a little bit more about mental health. And the reality is, if you're surrounded in a toxic environment, people that are not supporting you, a spouse that is very toxic and you're unhappy, you're miserable, you're depressed, you're anxious, you have to address this. And there are a lot of people, I know people, and I'm sure you do too, who believe strongly that more money will fix this problem. If you have a million dollars, you'll be able to find the love of your life. Your friends will like you more. You'll be able to do more things and you will feel loved and you will feel happy. And this is why so many people then start chasing money for all the wrong reasons. They get the money sometimes and then they end up even more depressed and more miserable than before because then they realized with a very painful reality check that more money is not going to fix the mental issues that they have in their lives, which is why you have to take care of this mental issue by itself, whether it's getting therapy, listening to the right podcast, starting to exercise, doing the meditations, doing whatever it is it might be to allow you to find the happiness in your own life and getting out of the toxic environments. And then you have to be spiritually fit. And this does not mean religious. When I say spiritually fit, I mean having your sense of purpose. Why are you getting up in the morning? What is your reason for wanting to do things? Because if you achieve financial fitness, but you have no no purpose, well, you've got the money. What's your point of, what's your reason to get out of bed and do something now? And you have to have that purpose. And most people start thinking about this way too late because they think, oh, I'm just going to keep working to get paid. I got to keep working to pay the bills. And then one day, maybe you retire. One day, you finally have that financial freedom. And then all of a sudden, you don't know what to do with your life. You're bored. You're miserable. You don't have a purpose. And you have to work on defining what is a sense of purpose that we have a reason to get out of bed every morning. And then you have the financial fitness. This, at the top of the quadruped triangle, is where money starts to play a part in your life because now... When you're fit spiritually, mentally, and physically, this is where more money can allow you to accelerate what you do in your life because more money just allows you to do more of the things that you love. More money gives you the ability to pay your bills much freer. More money allows you to go travel if that's what you want to do. More money allows you to give gifts to your spouse. More money allows you to give back to hungry people. More money allows you to do whatever it is that you want to do because it gives you that freedom. But most people assume that more money will allow them to make up for a lack in their spiritual fitness, in their mental fitness, or their physical fitness, and that's not how it works. More money will help you on the financial fitness side. And yes, if you don't have money, it can make you very spiritually lost because you don't feel like that sense of purpose because you're losing financially. More money can cause a lot of mental stress. It can cause depression. It can cause anxiety. Money problems are one of the leading causes of divorce and suicide. And more money or not having money can also cause a lot of physical issues because now you don't have the ability to eat healthy. You don't have the ability to exercise. You don't have the ability to do these things. But now understanding that you have to get financially fit. Don't listen to people who say that money doesn't matter. But also not obsess over money to the point where you lose sight over the other parts of life that actually will allow you to live a happy and fulfilled life because the goal is to live a happy life, not just be rich. The goal is to live a happy life. And part of being happy and fulfilled is being physically healthy, mentally healthy, spiritually healthy, and financially healthy all together. That way you can live a real life, not just somebody with a big bank account. Now, once you understand this system and you want to accelerate how fast you can build your wealth and your financial freedom, you're going to have to earn more money because the reality is the more money you earn, the more money you can also invest. Um, The majority of people think that the more money you earn, the more money you have to buy nicer cars. For the minority mindset thinkers, the more money you earn, the more money you have to invest, which means you have to know how to earn more money the right way. Unlike what the majority of people think, your income isn't the sole factor that will determine how wealthy you will become. There are three things that will determine how wealthy you will become. It is time. Time is how long you can invest your money for. Second is the return at which you can get when you invest your money. And three is how much money you invest. Time means I can put my money aside and let it compound. If you can put your money into an investment and let it grow for 100 years, well, even if you got a low rate of return, you can see that money grow a lot over the 100 years. In the investing game, it's all about how fast can you double your money. And if you can double your money every 10 years versus every two years, you can build a lot more wealth if you can double your money every two 
years, but this is where how can you invest your money longer that your money can double more times. Your return is how fast can you grow your money? Going back to now, how long is it going to take me to double my money? Is it going to be two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years? And the way that you can reduce how long it takes for you to double your money is by increasing the return that you get. How do you increase the return that you get? Well, this goes back to your financial education, learning how to invest your money, learning how to find good investment opportunities, looking for how to find value, add opportunities. That way you can go out and find better deals that will give you better returns. And then the third thing is, how do you invest more money? And the way that you can invest more money, meaning put more money towards your investments, is either you can spend less or you can earn more money. Now, there's a limit to how much less you can spend. Like if you make $50,000 a year, yeah, there's a limit to how much less you can spend. Maybe you can put aside $10,000 a year right now. Maybe you can go up to $15,000 a year, maybe even $20,000 a year that you can work to put aside that way you have money that's going to be invested because what you realize is the more you invest, the wealthier you become. And then you want to do more of that. But there's no limit to how much you can earn. Because if you can take that from $50,000 a year to say $500,000 a year, now you can invest way more aggressively without sacrificing every nice thing in your life. And this is where you have to figure out what is the right thing for you? How can you earn more money? Now, I've talked about this a lot of times, but not everybody is meant to be an entrepreneur. Some people feel like they have the entrepreneurial bug, but they don't have the ability to take on all that risk, at which case you could look into being an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is where you work inside of somebody else's company. This could be a startup. This could also be a big company, just depending on the position, where now you're working to lead something, come up with ideas, leading a new product or something, some idea, but you have the safety net of a company, you have the safety net of a salary, and you have the safety net of somebody kind of giving you that protection. That way you don't have to go out and start it all from scratch all by yourself. For some people, this type of entrepreneur role is the best thing for them because being an entrepreneur and taking on all that risk is a whole different game. Now, how do you find these types of entrepreneur positions? Well, if you work for a startup, pretty much everybody in the early stages of a startup has to be an entrepreneur because you're doing a little bit of everything. You have to make sure that this company works. You have to make sure that the division works and you have to make sure that the team works together. And if you get in early in a company, yeah, you might have to sacrifice your salary for a little while, but you will have the opportunity to earn way more money if the company is able to grow because you were on as one of the early companies. That means you could potentially see your salary grow significantly. And that also means you could potentially get some sort of equity or ownership in the company or revenue share in the company. That way, as the company grows, because you were on early, you were able to make a much bigger impact and earn a lot more money in the long term. But it's an investment in your part because if the company fails, well, you don't really get much out of that. The next thing is, if you're not that entrepreneur type, how can you earn more from your job right now? Is there a way for you to create a second job or maybe get a certificate or get some other skill that we can earn more money? Or is it something that you can do entrepreneurially? And right now, in this economic system, it has become so much more accessible for anybody to earn more money thanks to the internet. Now, this doesn't mean that it's easy, but accessible means it's possible. And I can tell you from experience that YouTube has changed the game significantly. And it's not just YouTube. I mean, it's all content. Content is the future. And I say this not just from being a content creator or randomly talking on YouTube videos, but even for business owners, people who have products, people who have things that they're selling. Content is how businesses and people are getting the word out. Because what has happened in the past is, let's say I had the idea to create a mug. You would come up with this mug idea, then you would want to get it into stores and you try to sell it in different places because you'd work with this other third party who could help distribute your product. And what people have learned is there's a limit on how many distributors there are, stores and people and all that. But you can almost cut out that distributor now by distributing directly to your consumer, directly to your customer. And the way that you find that customer is through your content because people are spending a big chunk of their lives on social media. And I can tell you this because recently Instagram announced a feature or released a feature which allows people to put a blue little check mark next to the name. It gives you that verification badge. And what I have seen happen is you see a lot of people with 45 followers or 110 followers 
and very few posts who are now paying whatever it is, I think it's $10 a month or something, paying their $10 a month, that way they can put a little check next to their name. What are you getting from that? Well, for some people, it's that clout. It's that sense of validation. And they're willing to invest their own money, which maybe they can't even afford. Maybe they can, I don't know. But people are investing their own hard-earned money just so they can have that little piece of validation on the internet, on this one app, a little blue check mark right next to their name. So yeah, people do value what's going on on the internet a lot. And do you want to know something else? People hate being sold to. In fact, people hate the idea of being sold to so much that they're willing to pay for it. People will pay to avoid advertisements on YouTube. YouTube has a feature. You can pay for YouTube, uh, the premium plan, where you don't have advertisements on YouTube. Why? Because people don't want to watch the advertisements. People pay on Netflix to avoid the advertisements. Yeah, it's a waste of time, but also because people hate the idea of being sold to. That's how much people hate advertising. But with content, it's a little bit different because then people go out of their way to watch you or your thing, your content creation. They go out of their way to watch or listen to or see your content. And then you have the permission to market whatever it is that you want. For example, we have a newsletter called Business Briefs, which is a free newsletter for business owners, entrepreneurs, and founders. And you want to know how I promote it? Well, I make videos like this, and then I talk about my newsletter called Business Briefs, which is a free newsletter to keep you up to date on the latest business trends and what's happening in the world of innovation and funding and entrepreneurship. And guess what? It's completely free. If you want to join Business Briefs, I got the link to hike and join down in the description below. This is a way that now you can integrate your product, your brand, your whatever it is that you're selling to your audience. And if you can learn this, you can also provide a lot of value to other businesses because this is going to be a major way that companies and brands will market their products in the future. Because 10 years ago, we started to first see the shift where you started to see media happen outside of TV. 10 years ago, back in 2013, people got their media still only from TV. Yeah, YouTube was coming up a little bit and there were some things happening online, but it was not that significant. Over the last five years, we have seen a major boom, especially after the pandemic, of people consuming their content from the internet. Whether it's YouTube, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Reddit, people are consuming way more online now than they were five years ago. And this trend is not slowing down. People don't go on to watch TV or the news on TV. They're finding the news and information from other places. And it's the same way that they're learning about their favorite products. Now, before, when a company had a product or something they wanted to sell, they would try to find a celebrity and pay them. They said, oh, we can just sponsor somebody and have them promote our product, which was a way that worked. But now as sponsor rates and advertising rates are going up, companies, more and more companies are saying, we're going to want to do some of this ourselves as well, which is why now you're going to see, and we are starting to see some of the biggest brands in the world and more and more brands around the world come onto the internet. At first it was coming onto the internet to be able to sell their products on the internet. That was like 10 years ago when companies were like, okay, maybe we should get into this whole e-commerce thing and sell things online because it looks like Amazon is right that we need to sell things online. Now, the next decade, it's going to be, okay, maybe we need to get into this content creation business because people love watching content on the internet and every company is going to want to have some sort of media division in their company because media is how you get people to hear about you. And this media is no longer running advertisements on TV. This media is creating your own content. And this is one of those things that you can't learn this in school because by the time the teacher learns it and then teaches you in that semester, Everything will change by the end of that semester. And one of the best ways for you to learn this is by doing it yourself. And by doing it yourself, you can either try to monetize it yourself by being an affiliate for other companies. You can get sponsorships and advertising revenue. Or you can sell your own product. And your product could be things like physical mugs. It could be education. It could be some sort of service that you have to offer. It could be whatever other product that you have. Or you can also monetize by saying, you know what? I'm going to take this new skill that I learned and offer this as a value to a company that I believe in, to 
a startup to a more established company because now you have a completely different skill that you can offer as well because the reality is this is where the world is going. And now you have the ability to get on top of this trend if you are looking to earn more money. Now, if you're saying, oh, I'm happy in my job, I make more money, fine. But if you want to earn more money, the content business is one of the fastest growing and one of the most underrated industries because if you can capture somebody's attention, you can make money. And the best example I can give you of this is think of Kim Kardashian. Whether you hate Kim Kardashian or love Kim Kardashian, she has people's attention. And because she has people's attention, if she wanted to launch her own line of toilet paper, I can guarantee you she would make millions of dollars from that toilet paper. Why? Because she has your attention. And if you can capture somebody's attention, you can make money selling whatever it is that you want to sell, but you have to first be able to get that attention. That way you can then sell an item. Because before, if you wanted to sell toilet paper, you had to get the distribution. And if you couldn't get the distribution, you had to spend a ton of money on advertising to get people to hear about your product. Now, that communication can be done effectively and organically, but it takes a lot of investment and to get that attention. And so now the name of the game is getting that attention. And if you can get that attention, there are an infinite ways that you can monetize that attention, but you have to be able to get that attention. And content in the modern day has allowed anybody to be able to get that attention but now it's how do you get that attention? And if you can get that attention, you can earn more money. But again, why are you earning more money? You're earning more money, not just so you can buy a faster car, but so you can buy more investments. And now when you buy more investments, because you're earning more money, you'll have your wealth being built faster. And then you can use your investments to then live off of, because now you have more money coming in that we can buy more assets and your assets can buy you more freedom. That is the name of the game. Work to earn assets instead of working to own nice things. If you continue to follow the system, your assets will be able to buy you the freedom that it is that you're looking for, but you want to be able to do it as fast as possible. If you want to do it as fast as possible, you have to earn more money. And if you want my opinion, content is the way to earn more money because if you can build good content and gap, capture somebody's attention, you can make money in an infinite number of ways and this trend is not slowing down. Now you're earning more money. What do you do with this more money? You buy more assets. When you buy more assets, you can have more freedom. This is the name of the game. The majority of Americans cannot afford to buy a home. That's according to data that came out in 2023, which says that about six out of 10 Americans cannot afford to buy a home in this economic environment. Now, that being said, we're not seeing homes in the housing market becoming more affordable. In fact, every time we see